I'm not going to ask Senator Klein to yield a question or two because I know, I think we all know what this bill does and we all know the problem that we're dealing with. I recently sent all of you a memo talking about the problems that we have in New York State as it relates to problem gambling. And parenthetically, let me advise all of you, if you didn't notice that memo, that March nationally is Gambling Awareness Month. And in recognition of that fact, our State Commission of the Office of Substance Abuse proposed that we not advertise for one week during this month all of the various games of chance that are sponsored and promoted by the State of New York. And to use that money to make more people aware of the problems of compulsive gambling and problem gambling. And of course, as you might expect, she was totally ignored. And what this bill does, it ignores the fact that in New York State we have over a million people. And this is not my number, it's a number that comes as a result of a survey and a study sponsored by our state agency and echoed by the Office of uh, Compulsive Gambling, Commission of Compulsive Gambling, over a million people who are problem or addicted compulsive gamblers. The damage they do to themselves is significant. You can multiply that number by three in terms of those who are affected, family members, businesses, by virtue of the problems that manifest themselves vis-a-vis -vis these individuals. Larceny, incarceration, social services, business failure, all the way down the list, and among them, suicides as a result of getting addicted. And who was the major culprit? The state of New York who has promoted year after year, every year virtually I've been here, one more gambling venue after the other. And when the VLTs were promoted, you know, they were with certain restrictions, 16 hours a day, 2 a.m. curfew, that's eliminated by this bill. Now goes to uh, 140 hours per week which if you multiply, divide it by seven is roughly 20 hours a day. Actually, exactly 20 hours a day. So, except for four hours at any 24-hour cycle, these racinos will be going full steam. Las Vegas of the East, gambling all the time. In addition, what the bill does, it puts in statute the replicative types of gambling that we find in casinos, roulette, baccarat, poker, all in there by virtue of law, and that's what this bill would do. So you have virtual casinos. You have one in Yonkers, you have one upstate, and of course we know about the one proposed for Aqueduct. And who will fall victim to these new opportunities? Well, all the studies again tell us they are middle-income middle people. And the economists tell us time after time, and it's very rare that economists will agree, but they all agree, that unless you attract people great distances to your region or state, you don't make any money. They call it a zero-sum game. As a matter of fact, there's an economist in, in uh, one of the states, one of the universities, who says for every dollar gambled, you lose three because of the businesses that are impacted upon, the individuals who are impacted upon, the cost that I mentioned earlier, and so on. So here we are in the month of March, National Gambling Awareness Day, and what are we doing? Month, but well, what are we doing? We're increasing gambling opportunities in the state of New York. What a travesty. At least you could have waited till April, Senator, you know, when we weren't in the middle of this month of awareness, where our state commission is trying to do something positive, fail and being ignored, and all the other things that are going on. Well, I think you've got the point. I think it's about time we said no 
we've got enough, and uh, this bill certainly uh, falls in the category of being more than enough.